If there was ever a uh, tap system you could nickname Tapzilla, this is it. Have a look at that bad boy. G'day, thanks for joining me for another video. Uh, today it's gonna to be a little bit different. I'm going to do a unboxing and review of the LinkTap wireless watering system that I use at home. I've mentioned LinkTap a few times in my previous videos, so I thought it about time that I do a proper video on what it is, why it's so good, and why I think you should get one. Uh, before I get stuck into it though, I should mention that I am not affiliated with LinkTap in any way. It's not sponsored by them at all, uh, so it's just purely my opinion and my experience on, on the product. Uh, so yeah, let's get stuck into it. Basically, what the LinkTap is, it's a wireless watering system that you plug into your home hose or your taps around your yard. Plug your hoses into them and you can control when the water turns on and off uh, either by phone or by setting up a schedule you can do it from your computer you can do it from anywhere uh, and that way you can have a heap more control over how much water you're putting out in your backyard your front yard and when you're doing it so for guys doing um, lawn renovations like myself at the moment it's really important to water the lawn a couple of times a day for the first week or so when you've when you've really scalped your lawn back uh, so if you've got to go to work or you, you know, you're not at your premises, maybe you're a, a landscaper who's doing it for a client, uh, you can control the watering and make sure it gets done for the right duration at the right time of day to keep that lawn growing and getting healthy again. So um, when I went looking for information about wireless watering systems, I found the usual suspects that you can buy at Bunnings or other online retailers um, from some of the bigger brands. Uh, and then I came across LinkTap sort of, I think by accident really, um, and their website is really good. I'll, uh, I'll link to that below in case you wanna go and have a look. But there weren't too many videos of reviews of it. Um, so I wasn't really sure um, whether there was, you know, whether it was what I wanted or not. So I did a heap of research. Uh, I reached out to them via Facebook on their Facebook page. I messaged um, the page and asked some information. They responded really quickly, which got a good, um, which, which was a big bonus for me. If you've got customer service that responds um, in a timely fashion, I always really um, rate that very highly. Um, and just on that, actually, on their customer service, um, I suppose it's always awkward to start off a positive review of a product with a negative, um, but it does come good. I bought three of these and um, straight out of the box, one of them had an issue. Uh, I thought it was something I was doing that was going wrong with it. So I set up my camera and I filmed what it was doing and sent it to them again via their Facebook page. And I just said, guys, what, what am I doing wrong here? What's, what, what setting have I got wrong or, or what's happening with it? Um, after about two or three minutes of back and forth conversation with them trying to troubleshoot it, um, the person I was speaking to sent me tracking advice from Australia Post. They had express post me a replacement, which is this one here. Um, basically, they said, yep, yeah, that sounds like it's a, a faulty unit. We're really sorry. Um, we'll send another one out to you straight away. Hang on to the old one. Um, chuck it in the bin for us. Do whatever you want with it. Um, they didn't want that one back. Uh, so they've sent me out another one. Um, straight away. So that was Friday afternoon. It arrived uh, yesterday, which was Monday. Uh, Express post from, like I said, it came from Canberra, um, which is where I think they're, they're based. So that sort of customer service is huge in my books. Um, you know, you're never going to get a 100% perfect product. So when you have a product that has an issue, being on top of it and keeping your customers happy is always uh, a bonus. So uh, big shout out to them and thanks for actually you know, living up to a good customer service. That's, that's, I can't rate that highly enough. Anyway, all right, so what do you get um, when you buy one of these? The first one that you buy, uh, you need to buy the link tap bit itself, but you also need the, the network bridge. 
because these operate on a Zigbee network. So if you're familiar with home automation, you may know what Zigbee is, but if you're not, that's okay. It's like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, but it's another version of those. So they don't operate on your home Wi-Fi or via Bluetooth. They operate on their own Zigbee network. So you need a Zigbee network bridge, which they sell with it. And you can connect 15 of these to every one bridge that you get. And every customer that buys this, you can put up to six bridges on your one account. So you technically can have 90 of these taps operating off one account, um, which is more than I would ever need. But if you were say um, running a hotel or a golf course or something like that, you may have a need for 90 watering um, uh, systems. So, you know, it's, it's pretty good in that respect. Um, so you need to buy the uh, Zigbee bridge, which connects just to the PowerPoint and to the back of your internet uh, router, your NBN router or, or modem or whatever it is, so that it gets the, the internet signal and then shoots it out to the taps. So um, I'll give you a quick view of what the bridge looks like um, in there attached to my modem. It's very small, just has a couple of lights on it, shows that it's connected to the internet, it shows that it has power and that it's sending out a signal. So in the box, you get an instruction manual and the link tap device. So that is what they look like. That's how big they are in my hands. This is a Samsung Galaxy S21 for size comparison. So that's the size of it. You get that, you get a tap connector and associated bits. You get a screwdriver because you need to take the back off to put some batteries in. They don't come with batteries. Uh, but they need, each one of these needs four AA batteries. Uh, but because uh, the Zigbee network, it operates on such little power, it actually doesn't really draw much out of here. So they reckon that four AA batteries will last about two years uh, in this before they need to be replaced. So that's pretty good. Um, the little screwdriver that they send is a nice touch so that you don't have to go fumbling for a, um, a screwdriver. So what I'll do is I will put the batteries in. So this version here is the G2S, which is their newest version. Uh, and it comes with this adapter here that you put on it with this little plug that you plug in the bottom. And that's a flow sensor. So it determines uh, how much water the flow rate of your tap going through it, uh, and it reports it back to the, the app that you download. So that's always handy uh, to know uh, how much water you're putting out and at what rates, because if you're putting in, say, an irrigation system that requires a certain amount of um, litres per minute, um, you can be sure that you're getting the right amount of water to those uh, sprinklers. So you just screw that one on there. Just hand tight, it's fine. And then undo the cable. That's where the flow sensor plugs in there. It's got four little pins and a little notch so that you can only put it in one way. Makes a good solid click when you put it in. And it's done. So you then connect that to your tap, connect your hose up under there, or however you're planning to um, set it up. Uh, on the unit itself, it's pretty straightforward. There is an on off switch at the bottom and a manual watering switch there. You can just push the, the manual on and off button and it's just like turning the tap on and off. So that's pretty good. Now to connect it to the app, you need to download the LinkTap app, which looks like this. And as you can see there, I have backyard and front yard already up and running. So this is the third one that I'm going to replace. I go up into the settings in the top left and you can see Second one down, gateway has a one next to it because I already have one gateway attached and I have two tap linkers. Uh, add a new device and it brings up this screen. You can either punch the number in manually or you can scan the QR code, which I know we're all very good at doing at the moment. The QR code is located underneath it. So you just scan it, gives an audible beep. Uh, it auto fills, hit submit. The device has been successfully added. So I'll close that. I flip that nice metal toggle switch there and we should see two lights come on. The power light is on, the Wi-Fi light is blinking, which means it's searching for the 
signal, it's found it, they're both solid. Then to save battery power, those lights turn off after I think uh, somewhere five or, or 10 seconds. Um, it'll turn off and, and that'll be ready to go. Yep, there they go, so they've gone off. Um, and now, as you can see on the screen there, tap linker is now added. So I go back to my main page, scroll down, and there's tap linker there. I can edit that to name it what I want. That one is going to control my soaker hose. So I will punch in soaker hose. Hit save, device name has been successfully updated. Right, so there we go. I now have three fully operating tap links. Um, you can see the new one there, there's no alarms or notifications set. You can go in and turn those on. So this has a fall alert, so that if it falls off the tap or if someone's pinching it, it will send a push notification to your phone. So if it's on the front yard or someone or something, and someone thinks, oh, I'll have that, and they unscrew it and take it, it'll think it's falling and it'll send you that. So I'll turn the tap linker on. Uh, sorry, that fault on. So to avoid false alerts, please install the tap linker on the faucet before enabling it. So basically what it's saying is, if I move it now, it'll send a, a notification. So. I'll turn that off there. Water shut off failure. So if it fails to turn off, if you're at work and suddenly you, you've had an issue, you've got a split hose or something and there's water bucketing out and it's trying to turn it off and the water's still coming out, it will tell you. Uh, and then water cut off or stop flowing. So if it, um, if it uh, shuts off unexpectedly in case, yeah, you might have a split prior to this um, and the water stops, coming to this, it'll send you a push notification. So when you set up the Zigbee bridge, um, you set up an account with Taplinker and it gets your, um, you give it an email address. So it'll send you an email every time there's an alert and it'll send you a push notification if you turn it on. You can turn them off if you don't want them on, so that's fine. Um, yeah, so when you turn them on, um, you can have push notifications for just about every aspect. When they turn on, when they turn off, how much water they've used, whether they've tipped over, whether, um, whether there's been some sort of fault. And I was reading actually that when there's a fault, it'll actually do a self-diagnosis um, before it sends you the alert. So it takes about a 10 second delay before it sends you the alert, just in case it's actually a false reading. So I think that's pretty good because you don't want to get an alert saying that your water shut off unexpectedly or isn't shutting off and you're sort of panicking and then you get home and there's there's nothing wrong with it because it was a, a false reading. So um, the other cool thing about these is the way that you can set up the batch watering and calendar watering. So what I'll do is I'll go and fit this up to the tap and we can have a look and then I'll come back and go through how you actually set up scheduled watering because I think it's really cool. Righto, so here is the link tap plugged into the um, tap at the back of the house. As you can see, it's on a Gardena um, water splitter, but it doesn't need to be. Obviously, you can just put it straight onto the, the tap if you wanted to, uh, but it just screws under the normal fitting and then your hose or irrigation system screws on underneath it. Um, I obviously have the, the hose reel and the other irrigation systems hooked up to various other bits, um, but this is the sprinkler system for the backyard that I'm going to be using uh, during the lawn reno, so it's the most important um, at the moment. So this tap is always on, and these taps I turn on and off as required, so the normal garden hose is just off. When I want to use it, I turn that tap on. This one's always on, so the water is always routed from the tap through the splitter straight into here, and it's the um, the actual lockout system on here that's causing it to, to hold the water back. Uh, what I will do is I will move out of the firing line up onto the veranda, and I will turn my screen recorder on and put the camera back on, and we'll see what a, a real-time activation looks like, how long it takes, and how well it works. I think it gives up to a 15-second delay from the time you hit it on your app. So we'll open up the Link Tap app, go into the backyard, watering on for one minute, set there one minute, and hit activate. So watering will start in 15 seconds. Let's point my camera now. Here's my first sprinkle there. We'll see what happens. Hopefully it kicks off, otherwise it's a bit of an awkward review. Oh, there we go. Watering has started. So for one minute. Now, the watering, obviously, the sprinkler won't start until the, uh, the back pressure from the rest of the system fills up, but at least you can see that it's turned on and it's operating. 
and off it goes. Sprinkler sprinkling. All right, head back inside out of the wind. <laughs> okay, I'm back. So as you can see, it's quite easy to connect them all up to your taps and to your hoses so that uh, they're ready to operate whenever you set up whatever version of watering you're going to use. So what I'll do now is just run through on the app how you would set up, say, a, um, a scheduled watering for um, once a day for one particular part or a couple of times over a couple of days uh, and see how we go. So um, what we do is open the link tap app and as you can see i've got my three um uh, link taps there they've got signal they've got battery they're ready to go what i do is i create or edit a watering plan so i'll start with the backyard seven day mode because for the first seven days after i do my lawn reno i'm going to need water three times a day every day for that week um, just to really promote the, the new growth of my grass. So I go into seven day mode, create watering timer. We will call it uh, Reno week one. On Monday at 7 a.m. I want the backyard to come on for 20 minutes. So you can see there, I hit plus. I then change the time. I then want it, so 7 a.m. I then want it to come on at 11 a.m. for 20 minutes and hit plus. I then change the time again to 3 p.m. Yeah, that sounds about right. For 20 minutes and I hit plus. So as you can see down the bottom there, I have um, Monday has three times set for the backyard now, seven, 11, and three. Up next to where it says Monday there, there's the little copy link that we might see from um, copy and paste on your computer, wherever you hit copy, and you select all of the days that you want that to operate. And you see it auto-populates Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It is going to turn on the backyard at 7 a.m., 11 a.m., and 3 p.m. for 20 minutes. Pretty straightforward, right? I then go down and hit save. The watering plan has been saved. Would you like that to activate it now? I won't activate it now because uh, I'm not gonna do my reno for a week and a half. So I don't want the watering to start today, tomorrow, whatever. Uh, so no, but as you can see, reno week one is now in seven day mode. I go back out of the backyard and go into the front yard and create a watering plan, seven day mode, create watering timer. Now, one of the things that's important to remember is if you are operating like uh, I am, if you're gonna operate a number of different hoses throughout your entire property, the water pressure is going to reduce the more taps that you've got on, that's, that's pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is I've set the backyard to come on at 7 a.m. for 20 minutes. I'm gonna get the front yard to then come on at 7.22 for 20 minutes. So the backyard will finish, have a couple of minutes to make sure that it's, um, you know, it's turned off and it's reset. Uh, and then at 7.22, I'll make the back, the, the front yard come on for 20 minutes. So that'll be, goes for 20 minutes to 7.42. So then at 7.45, I'll make the side yard come on for 20 minutes. And that way, each of those three applications is getting the full brunt of the available water pressure at my house. Uh, and the watering takes about an hour, three times a day. So for, as far as the neighbors can see or anyone will know, um, I've got an hour's worth of water chucking around my yard three times a day for a week. Um, not that it's any of their business, but it's actually quite a, a good way to do it. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I've been using the link tap stuff now for, like I said, sort of six to eight weeks. And with the exception of that little hiccup of the third one, um, that stopped working and they've sent me out another one immediately. Um, it's been really good, it's, it's really handy. Now, I know that there are other options out there that may be suited um, for your, your application, but I strongly suggest you have a look at LinkTap. Um, that the product is, is really good. Um, time will tell, I suppose. I'll do another review after I've done the lawn reno in a few weeks to see how well it worked watering 
um, three different taps three times a day for probably three weeks or so by the time I finish chucking out all that water uh, and see how it holds up. So uh, check back with me and I'll do an updated review when all that's done and go from there. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching. If you made it this far, give us a uh, thumbs up or a like on the video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. Uh, and check back because, as I said, the lawn renovation is going to start next Wednesday. Uh, it's going to take, we've got to do it in a couple of stages um, with scheduling with my shift work and whatnot. But next Wednesday, I'm going to hopefully kick it off and uh, there'll be a few videos coming thick and fast then. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time on The Lion Lawn.